The number one thing you need to have a successful career in science outside the classroom is just basic time management. And so I think a lot of people tell you to kind of cultivate that while you're in college. Uh, I'm still struggling with it. I know a lot of other grad students and beyond who are struggling with it. You need to learn how to uh, be your own master. Motivate yourself, console yourself, uh, pick the pieces back up and keep going. All of those things that other people might have done for you in the past, that's all up to you. Uh, you definitely need to be able to work independently. You need to be able to be self-motivated, uh, problem solve on your own, and uh, really work through situations. On top of that, uh, you really need to be able to um, uh, work well with others, communicate well with others, um, and be part of a team. Because science is getting more and more collaborative. Uh, there's this lonely genius in a lab code, in a lab, and finding answers for big questions all alone. That's not true. Science is a collaborative effort. Science, like a lot of other uh, areas of interest these days, requires knowing people and putting yourself out there often. That means, aside from just being good at what you do, you need to be able to tell people that you're good at what you do. This doesn't come naturally to a lot of scientists, but sometimes you need to be your biggest cheerleader. This is really important for moving up the science food chain, whether it's your grad school application or a job interview or a research grant proposal. You have to know how to confidently and effectively toot your own horn. There will be lots of no's in science, and that doesn't mean that anything you've done is wrong. It just means that it's not the right fit or that there's someone else who is a better fit or that just like chance wasn't in your favor. Um, and you sort of have to keep going even when you hear no. Um, so I think you just need to know no is going to come and that doesn't really mean anything about you. You need to be comfortable with criticism and recognize that criticism when uh, provided in a tactful way can be an incredible asset to you. And it can help you understand the weaknesses in your understanding of a concept or the weaknesses in your experimental design or, or your, your theoretical model or whatever it is. Uh, and this will save you loads of time and headache later. So you learn to love criticism, I think. Most of us do. Because you never know in science what is going to be thrown at you, I guess, whether you're in the field or in the lab or um, maybe it's even some, some other issue. Um, you just need to be able to overcome those things and, and keep going. And believe in yourself, believe that you are a scientist. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, be sure to like and subscribe and definitely check out some of our other videos either here on the YouTube or um, on Instagram or on scial.org. Um, we look forward to chatting science with you. Next time.